There's been a lot of talk about ESOS action plans. They're the new kids on the block. They're the new bit of ESOS. They're the bit of ESOS you have to do every year, which is unusual because normally ESOS is every four years. A lot of my clients have been asking, what is an ESOS action plan? You know, what does it involve? What does it got to contain? What's the process, etc.? So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time just um, sort of diving into that for you and showing you, um, you know, what is an ESOS action plan? Who's got to do it? When's it got to be done by? What's got to go in it? How do you sign it off and stuff like that? Okay, so relatively short video. It's not a long one today. Um, our ESOS action plans. If that's for you, you're in the right place. So at Anistic, uh, we help hundreds of people go through ESOS. We've done I don't know, five, six hundred of them, something like that. And a very common question that we're getting now is what are ESOS action plans? They're the kind of new kids on the block. They're the kind of new feature of ESOS. And the biggest thing they do is, is there's, there's two main things. First is that they're every year. So you do the action plan and then you do the update. So whereas every four years for ESOS, now it's an annual requirement. And the second thing is they're public. So, you know, ESOS before has always been kind of behind closed doors. And now for the first time, you know, information about what your company is doing to reduce its energy um, and, uh, energy use is gonna be made public. Now, what I think is gonna happen, I've got no evidence of this, my suspicion is that this information, when it's made public, will allow a lot of comparison to be made between company A and company B. Um, with growing consumer demand about, you know, buying more and more sustainably, my belief is that that will put pressure on companies to you know appear more sustainable and hopefully they are more sustainable but definitely to appear more sustainable and so you know this concept of ESOS action plans being made public I think is going to put a great deal of pressure on my clients to actually say well look you know we need to make sure this is presented in the right light the optics on this look good and reflect what we're doing a lot of my clients are doing a lot of work to save carbon, a lot of work to save energy, etc. And this is their opportunity to say, look, we care about this stuff. We're writing it down, we're publishing it, and, you know, feel free to look through it, okay? So they're going to be quite important pieces of, of um, information to help people compare companies. What are they? It's a list, broadly speaking. It's a list of what you're going to do to save energy, when you're going to do it, what amount of energy you expect to save during a four-year period, more on that later. Who told you to do this? <laughs> was it the ESOS lead assessor? Someone like, you know, our good selves at Anistic, or was it someone else? Um, and how the estimates of savings were um, sort of generated. Now, the level of detail that they want for those estimates is quite detailed. So, you know, if you haven't got a, a carbon accounting package that does all the sort of grunt work for you, then uh, you know it's back to Excel for you and you, you've got a merry time in Excel sort of getting everything revved up, okay? Now they are gonna be made public. So you've got, um, they say they're gonna do that within six months of the um, date when you need to file them, which is the 5th of December, 2024. So six months, so they'll be filed probably in Q1, Q2 next year, it all goes to plan. Um, and what they've got to do is they've got to look at all of the savings you're going to do, all of the actions your company is going to do to save energy between uh, the 6th of December 2023 and the 5th of December 2027. Okay, and that's a four year period. And what they want you to do is they want you to list down all the things that you're going to do um, between you know, that, those two dates, you know, that four year period starting the 6th of December, 23. And they want to estimate what they're gonna, what you're gonna save during that time. What you then want to do in 25 and 26 is produce an update that looks at everything that you said in the ESOS action plan and says, well, how well are you getting on doing the projects that you've committed to do, okay? They're not mandatory. So, you know, they expect you to, I suspect, Kind of follow the general theme of the projects you put down but at the end of the day this is your business and the projects you put in there you're not mandated to do but there will be the expectation that if you put it down in the action plan you know you're going to have a serious go at doing it um, and then in the in the update in 25 uh, which is in the 5th of december 25 and 5th of december 26 
minutes, right? Um, you're expected to update them, say, look, this is our progress. For example, we said we were going to update the lights in site one, site two, site three, and site four. Well, actually, we've done site one and site two. We're halfway through site three. Things are going well. We're on track, okay? By looking at the estimated energy savings during that period for each of the improvements you're looking to make, what they're trying to do is probably add it all up. You know, they're probably trying to say, well, look, you know, um, isn't ESOS a wonderful scheme because companies are going to save a total of X, Y, Z, you know, from, you know, sort of going through this process and the government's going to look good, the ESOS scheme's going to look good, and they're going to get a figure at the end of the day saying, look, we did the ESOS scheme, we're going to generate savings, I don't know, X gigawatts, whatever it is they're going to come up with. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you need to do. Now, in terms of each energy measure, energy improvement measure you're looking to make, you must list down what it is you're doing. You must explain, this is what we're trying to do, maybe with you know, line of, you know, one paragraph or one line of, of explanation. You must say whether it's recommended or not by an ESOS lead assessor, yeah? You've got to say what the estimated savings are during that period, you know, 6th of December 23 through to the 5th of December 27. And you've got to estimate the savings during that period. So you need to look at um, either what the, for example, let's take LED lights, what the power consumption was before, what the power consumption was after, what the pattern of operation of the lights were, uh, and you know what percentage of lights were already done and not done, all that sort of stuff that we did for ESOS. And then you know project that over a four-year period, or if you're starting it halfway through the period, you know, what's left, you know, a third of the way through, whatever it is, you know, whatever that bit is left between those two dates, the 6th of December 23 and the 5th of December 27. Okay. Now, the level of detail that they want you to go to in that is quite extreme. Um, and, you know, you might think, well, that's a lot of work. Well, it depends how you've done it. If you're um, on Excel, good luck. I hope it goes really well. But I'm just sort of clicking around here. Let me show you the, the platform because a lot of people, um, if you're using a platform to do your sort of calculations for ESOS or, you know, for SCCR or TCFD or CSRD or CBAM or Europe is going to be, you know, you've already got this information in the projects area. So a lot of the work that you, you, you sh need to do for the energy action plans is already done if they're in ESOS and they're in the platform. So if you're in the NISTIC platform or the other platforms, you should be able to take the information that you've already got in here and use that as a basis for your energy, you know, sort of action plans and, and reporting those. Of course, you know, if you're going to go on and use your ESOS report as a basis for further sort of work, either a carbon reduction plan or science-based targets or TCFD or IFRS S2, I'm trying to get my head around that one, that's the new kid on the block again in that, that world, um, then, you know, you can, they all feed into, you know, this sort of, uh, targets area and so you can do scenario analysis etc for that and of course we'll feed into the progress you know components here so you can do year on year sort of progress um, so you know if you've got good data in the first place this shouldn't be too much work it's just a case of making sure that you put it down in the format they want you know which um, is should be quite straightforward other bits to consider when you when you're looking at this list in terms of um, you know uh, uh, compiling the list of things is it doesn't have to be just the projects that are identified during ESOS. You you're not just allowed to, but you're encouraged to put other things in there as well. It doesn't have to be just energy related savings or projects. You can actually put in sort of carbon related, you know, carbon saving projects. Uh, for example, reduction of waste or reduction of single-use plastics, etc. That can all go in there. If you do add other things in, you should be saying what sort of uh, scheme or accreditation scheme they came from. So, for example, you know, you could say this is what we're doing to help meet our obligations under CCA. This is our SBT kind of group of projects: uh, TCFD, CSRD, SECR, etc. You know, you should actually sort of start referencing back the other standards if you are following those standards. And, and a lot of people will be, especially SECR. 
When you've got that list, you compile it down and don't forget you're going to be measured on your uh, progress against the commitments that you're putting down in there. Then you must also yeah, total it up. Oh, that's not hard, is it? That's a calculator job. That's a two minute job. Um, but then you must itemize each one of those and say whether it's a building related energy saving, whether it's a transport related energy saving, uh, building, transport, uh, I missed one out, uh, industrial processes, and then there's a catch all group called other. And then at the bottom, as well as the grand total, you've got to put the, you know, the itemized totals of each of those four things. Okay. Sounds quite straightforward, doesn't it? It doesn't sound so bad at all. Um, you know, if you want to look at the worked example, they do give one in the guidance. You know, this is the, the example they give. So this is a worked example saying they're going to do 10 projects. Here's two of them, upgrade their lighting and improve the insulation. Okay. So for that worked example, here's the kind of calculations you've got to do. And don't forget, you've got to back these up. How did you, how did you get these numbers? Okay. But that's the kind of calculation you're supposed to do for each one of the um, sort of projects you put down. And in Glorious Technicolor, this is, you know, kind of how you write that down in sort of a bullet point format. Uh, this is what they're looking for. Okay. So that's the kind of level of detail you need for these things. Um, other bits and bobs, you need to keep everything in your evidence pack and i suspect that you know the, the the online accounting platforms these days are starting to become kind of like virtual evidence packs i think kind of virtual resource evidence packs because that you know with more files that are uploaded and more evidence files and more xyz you know that they're sort of becoming quite a repository of data but you've got to keep it in your evidence pack um and you've got to don't forget those uh, estimation sort of techniques you know how did you get to the figures that you've used in the plans. Um, and you must have it signed off by a director and the director has got to sign off to say that they've seen it and they've considered it. Now, when we signed off with Mesos, there was a catch. Uh, there was a sort of a, a clause saying that, you know, it was a director or equivalent managerial responsibility individual. Um, so in some instances, it's the primary contact that will be signing these off, maybe the secondary contact generally a director board level director if you can get a board level director okay so there you go that's esos action plans um i think they're quite a good idea actually i mean one of the big criticisms was for esos that it's every four years and therefore by the time you get to year three everybody's forgotten about what happened previously so the idea that the annual is a good idea i like that i like the fact that they are public and you are stating to the world this is what i'm going to do OK, this is what I'm going to do. You know, these are the ESOS projects I'm, I'm looking to implement. These are the other things that I'm looking to implement as well. This is what I'm going to save. And I like the fact that, you know, it's forcing companies to consider these matters, not just annually, but consider how the kind of the general opinion, the optics, to use the American phrase, what the optics of the situation is. It will give, as I said at the start, a great opportunity for companies that do work in a sustainable fashion to kind of, you know, trumpet, fanfare and sort of shout from the rooftops about the good work they're doing. And that's brilliant. You know, if you're a company that's doing a lot of sustainability work, this is your chance to shine. OK, so there you go. I hope that was useful. I hope that was uh, kind of demystified action plans a bit for you. If you've got any other questions to do with, you know, sort of carbon reduction or SECR compliance, TCFD, IFRS, CSRD, you know, you choose your acronym. If there's anything to do with carbon, if, uh, if you've got any questions, ping them across. And if, if I can help, certainly will. Okay. Hope that was useful. And I'll see you next time.